Tributes have been paid to the actor Richard Bryce, who has died at the age of 79. He was best known to millions for his enduring role in the TV sitcom The Good Life. The star, who is also known for his Shakespearean roles, has been battling a serious lung condition for a number of years. Nick Hyam looks back at his life. You are not starching, Margot. You are a very attractive woman. You <laughs> are not. Yes, you are. And I'll tell you something else. You've got a very sexy neck. <laughs> You've never seen my neck. Richard Briers and Penelope Keith in a scene from The Good Life. The show was originally written as a vehicle for Richard Briers, a sign of his reputation in the 1970s as one of Britain's finest comic actors. In the brilliant four-strong cast, he played the infuriating but endearing Tom Good, who threw up regular work to become self-sufficient. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Tom. It's me, Margot. <laughs> Good morning, Margot. Yes, you're perfectly correct, it is you. He'd started acting in the RAF, a drama school he shone, playing Hamlet, no less. I got a notice from Darlington, the great critic in the Telegraph in those days, and he said, um, last night Richard Browse played the part of Hamlet like a demented typewriter because I was very highly strung and spoke very fast. His nervous very energy very and machine-gun delivery soon I brought him work on television. Yes, sir. I got the silver gear lever, sir. <laughs> we can't eat that. He became a household name in marriage lines with Prunella Scales. But it isn't a pie if it hasn't got a top, it's a stew. Well, George Starling in marriage lines was quite like Tom Good in The Good Life. I pretty well played myself. Highly strung, nervous, rather stupid person. Uh, desperate. You get things right and getting them wrong, you know, the usual thing. After The Good Life, he began to stretch himself in restoration comedy at Chichester and in Shakespeare with Kenneth Branagh. Dickie and I agreed that uh, we're both the quickest Hamlet on record. He wishes he had a recording of his to see whether in fact he was quicker than me. I didn't think he was. I'm most powerfully and potently believe yet I hold it not honestly to have it thus set down. For you yourself, sir, shall grow old as I am if, like a crab, you could go backward. Now this be madness, yet there is method in it. Branner directed him as King Lear, and in films like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, opposite Robert De Niro. A man shouldn't have to hide in the shadows. That's never your slip. I'd be ashamed to put you in an old rag like that. In Dad, he movingly played a man who discovers his wife, suffering from Alzheimer's, oh, is being abused. Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. As films like Much Ado About Nothing confirmed, Richard Briers was more than just a great comic actor. It wasn't until late in his career that he got the chance to show just how much more. Richard Briers, who's died aged 79. So! So! Ha, you call yourself a bean, do you? It was one of the defining sitcoms of its age, and Richard Briers was at its heart. An awkward relationship with his snobbish neighbours kept the affable eccentric and the show high in the ratings throughout the 70s and 80s. All right. Hey, you messed me, Bogle. Do your worst. <laughs> he starred in many other hits, taking the role of a Highland Laird and Monarch of the Glen. Success. God bless you, sir. But he was much more than just a funny man. Teaming up with Kenneth Branagh, he gained a reputation as a fine Shakespearean actor. It's like a weasel. It is backed like a weasel. Or like a whale. Very like a whale. Then I will come to my mother by and by. Despite his many and varied roles, Richard Briers will be best remembered as the character Tom, who dropped out of the rat race, took over this very ordinary-looking suburban house and struggled with the dream of becoming self-sufficient and in the process gave millions of television viewers a real taste for the good life. Weak and feeble, am I? The series ran for 30 episodes. Penelope Keith, one of only two remaining stars, described Briars as self-deprecating and always courteous. I quite like you. <laughs> and that's a view echoed by his godson, who also worked with him as an actor. I think he was the sort of man that we all felt we knew. He was just approachable and honest and friendly and delightful and unpretentious and exactly the way he came across in a lot of his performances. A really lovely, warm, delightful man. 
He's been awarded an OBE and a CBE for services to the arts. His health suffered in recent years. He put that down to heavy smoking. He used his fame to help campaign against the expansion of Heathrow Airport, but admitted then he never really had much in the way of green fingers. I did, did grow some beans once and uh, in my suburban garden in Chiswick. And I had to go on tour away for two months. I came back because there were 30 feet in the air. I, couldn't, I hadn't got a ladder long enough to go and get the harvest, as I believe the phrase is. But it is as a gardener that he will be remembered and, of course, a much-loved comedy character. Remembering Richard Breyer's Harry Smith reporting there. Well, joining me live now is Penelope Keith, who, of course, starred alongside Richard Breyer's in The Good Life. Penelope, everyone is feeling sad today. We all felt we knew him uh, as, as we were just hearing there. But for those of you who really did, it must be a very difficult day, isn't it? Yes, it is. I was on my way to a meeting when someone telephoned me in a taxi and I felt as though I'd been hit in the solar plexus. I knew he was ill. I'd spoken to him on his birthday, which was about three weeks ago, and he sounded really wheezy then. But it's a, it's a great shock. He was an amazing person and a, and a great, great friend of ours. In a business that is uh, fickle and not always particularly kind, I think he was very unusual, wasn't he? Because he was hugely successful, and yet everyone seemed to like him. How did he do it? I don't know. I wish one could bottle it and sell it. But um, everyone did like him. He, he, was an, he was extraordinary. I know on The Good Life we did 30 episodes of that. The crew were nearly always the same and it was the same team. But Dickie was always courteous, polite, kind and a joy, a joy to work with. I look back on it. I'm, I mean, I heard the news, which made me very sad, and then I just smiled, because whenever I saw Richard, I smiled. He was, of course, very famous for, for that brilliant success in The Good Life, as you all became incredibly well known through that. But he also made a great career in the classics, didn't he? Notably with, with Kenneth Branagh. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I saw the Lear. It was remarkable. And uh, some, some of the films as well. Um, the thing is, people of our generation, actors of our generation, did a lot of varied work. And if we were lucky enough to get a situation comedy, and we always considered it very lucky, and we thought that was wonderful, but it was only part of our work. I mean, mostly one did The Good Life for about ten weeks a year, and then there was theatre and lots of other things to do. But it was just a joy. How are you going to remember him, do you think? You say you look back and every time you think of him, you smile. But what's the overwhelming memory? Well, I suppose my overwhelming memory of someone is a true gentleman in all the senses of the word. He proved that one could be selfless as an actor and generous. And I think that's a remarkable gift. It's a lovely way to be remembered. Penelope Keith, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.